In this updated Halo Color review, I'll show you how I achieved far better performance with the Invisible Fence than I did in my initial testing over 100 days ago. Plus, I took the opportunity to pack this video full of information, a ton of which wasn't covered the first time around. We'll dive deep into this GPS dog collar's logic, see two easy methods for setting up fences, uncover three quick hacks to maximize its performance out of the box, and so much more. As always, I'll evaluate the Halo Collar from a dog's perspective, this time using my new methodology. And of course, you'll get to see me get shocked. Check out the video description for my latest recommendations and links to any deals I have. I can always come back and update that description, but once I hit publish on this video, it's more or less set in stone. If you've been following along, you'll know I was disappointed with the Halo Collar's performance after my initial field tests. And this is the Halo 2 Plus. But with continued testing, I've been able to demonstrate significantly improved performance. In one regard, there's a bit of an egg on my face, and I apologize for that. In others, there are some nuances that can be leveraged to make sure you're getting all this color has to offer. My assessment based on my continued field testing is that the Halo Collar can be an effective tool for training your dog to stay in your yard off leash. It's not perfect, but it can do the job pretty well. From a pricing standpoint, it's way more affordable than professionally installed in-ground systems. And it fills the void between the high-end spot on GPS dog fence and the lower end options like the WAGS Freedom Collar or even the PetSafe Wireless dog fence which doesn't use a GPS at all. Now before we dive in, I need to make it clear that I don't advocate using the static correction on your dog. It freaking hurts, just like all the others. But many dog owners feel that the benefits outweigh the drawbacks, and I get that. I'm not here to tell you how to train your dog. I'm here to tell you how well the Halo Collar works. So let's do it. As you get started with any invisible dog fence system, boundary training your dog is essential to achieving success. My understanding is that Halo estimates training to take about 21 days with sessions of at least 15 minutes per day. This is a fair estimate. I've seen anywhere from two to four weeks depending on the company and the time per day. Obviously it depends on your dog. Don't worry if they take a little bit longer. With enough patience and encouragement, pretty much every dog will get there. Halo prides themselves on their training programs. They're developed by Caesar Milan. If you're a dog owner, you almost certainly know who he is. Basically, that comes in the form of video training modules via the app. If you offer Halo's top tier gold plan for your subscription, which is $29.99 per month at the time of filming, you can access premium lessons, live sessions, and Q&A sessions with expert trainers too. And keep in mind that the Halo Collar does require a subscription to use it. The basic plan for the Halo Collar is $4.49 per month at the time of filming, and it gives you pretty much everything you need. Although if you want to unlock more, you can, and there's also a silver plan if you want something in between. Now beyond training your dog, the Halo Collar doesn't come rip roaring and ready to go right out of the box, but there are three hacks you can implement to make sure you get the best performance performance in a short amount of time. And I call them hacks, but these are all pieces of information that Halo will give you. The thing is, as you get started, you'll be bombarded with information from setting up the app and picking your subscription, to training modules for your dog, to training modules for you to teach you how to actually use the collar. And you're going to learn all that, but I think these three points deserve highlighting. First and simplest is how your dog will actually wear the collar. The optimal placement is sideways on the neck so that the Halo logo on the fabric covering, installed correctly, is facing downwards. This serves two purposes. First, it ensures that the GPS receiver is towards the back of the neck so it's facing the sky, allowing for the best reception. The second is that the Halo Collar speaker will then be optimally located below your dog's right ear so they can hear it well. This is a little non-obvious for two reasons. First, the GPS location is not marked on the collar or the fabric covering at all. And the second is that there's a little leash loop here, which is nice, but if you've ever walked a dog before, you're probably used to seeing that back here. The second hack is also pretty simple, but it's tucked away within the app. What you need to do is make sure that your collar has collected enough satellite data to most accurately pinpoint the collar's location. All you have to do is make sure your dog is running around the area where you're setting up the fences while wearing the charged collar until the location data have been collected. There's no set time frame on this, it's going to depend on a number of factors. I've seen it take about 10 minutes in my experience. Really, the way to know if it's collected enough data is to go into settings on the app, then to my callers, then tap on your caller, and at the bottom tap advanced settings. Here you'll see a block titled satellite position data, and if there's a little alert icon and a message saying no satellite position data on the collar, you're going to want to collect more by letting your dog run around for a bit with the collar on. Once there's enough data, it should say 3 days remaining, or something similar. This is something that's worth checking periodically, especially after the collar has lost its charge or if you're using it in a new area. And the third hack, so to speak, is right in the same place in the app. You'll want to tap on the GPS signal level settings box. Now don't change anything here unless you know what you're doing, but you can see at a glance how strong your GPS signal is where you're using the collar. Ideally, when you're outside and using fences, you want that gray bar pushed towards the max side of the meter to make sure you're getting plenty of signal. Now, we'll talk about those pink and blue sliders in a bit, but again, don't touch them unless you know what you're doing. So now let's go over how the Halo Collar is supposed to work so that when I strap it on for field testing, you'll know what to expect. You can set up an invisible fence on your phone using one of two methods, which we'll go over in a minute here. And within the boundaries of that fence, your dog can run around happy and free. As they approach the boundary, the Halo Collar provides three levels of feedback, warning, boundary, and emergency. Feedback starts in the warning area, which begins about seven to 10 feet from the boundary. 
The first level of feedback, warning, starts when your dog enters the warning area and is moving towards the boundary. This is a beep by default. The second level, boundary feedback, starts when your dog continues to approach the boundary after receiving the warning feedback. This is vibration by default. As long as the two feedback types are different, for example, you haven't set both boundary and warning feedback to sounds, your dog will receive both types of feedback simultaneously. The third level is emergency feedback, and this starts when your dog continues past the fence boundary. It's static correction by default, and the emergency feedback continues as long as your dog continues away from the boundary. The emergency feedback should discontinue if your dog stops moving, or if they turn around and head back towards the safe area within the boundary. And if they do head back, the caller should start issuing the encouragement feedback, which I believe is Cesar Milan's voice saying, you're coming home by default. Worth noting is that there's quite a bit of customization allowed for all of those feedback alerts, which is a nice touch and will come in handy later in this video. In terms of a safety shutoff or the static correction, the protection zone continues about 300 feet past the boundary, at which point the caller should stop issuing boundary feedback and just play the return whistle. So that's the logic, and here's how we actually set up the fence. From the home screen, you slide up until you see the Find and Manage Fences section, and press Add Fence. The first way is super simple, you just draw it in manually. You start tapping on the map where you want to draw the fence post and tap back on the first post when you're done. Then just tap next, name the fence, and you're good to go. From what I can tell, all of your fences run simultaneously and you can create up to 20 of them, although they can't overlap. The second way to make fences is to hold the collar and mark the boundary. Before you do it this way, it's really important that you have enough satellite data and a good signal like we talked about earlier, otherwise it doesn't work so well in my experience. You get started the same way, but then tap that little collar icon. Then you'll want to select your collar and press Find Collar. The collar will blink and beep when it's found, at which point you can press Done. Then make sure your dog's icon is indeed where you're standing. You'll need to physically tap the Add GPS button to drop fence posts where you'd like them, and there's a maximum of 20 fence posts, so keep that in mind as you go. When you get to the end, just tap on your first fence post to close the loop and then press Next. It'll show you the warning area and then just name the fence and you're done. So we'll put one of these fences to the test in just a bit here, but there are a few more benefits of the collar that I want to highlight first. The first is that the Halo Collar does have some logic to reduce feedback functionality when the GPS signal is low. This comes back to the blue and pink sliders that we saw earlier in the advanced settings. The point of this is to turn off the static correction when the GPS signal is on the weaker side, the most obvious example being if your dog is inside your house. When the signal is in that medium range, which is the pink region, the fence feedback is set to return whistle only. In the low region, which is gray, fence feedback is temporarily turned off. While I think the intention here is good and it's a reasonable safeguard, I'm not the hugest fan of functionality relying on thresholds of something so variable as GPS signal strength. It does open the doors to low GPS signal strength causing fence boundaries to be ignored. It's probably going to work most of the time, otherwise they wouldn't have designed it that way, but be aware of it, and I'd advise against running a fence boundary close to or even through your house. For that purpose they have beacons, and there are three types, indoor, outdoor, and USB. Your Halo 2 Plus collar ships with an indoor beacon. Beacons are Bluetooth devices that establish safe zones or keep out zones in a circular pattern with the beacon at the center. The ranges are variable so you can set them as needed. My understanding is that the Bluetooth takes priority over the GPS signal and with keep away zones you can set up your dog's collar to deter them from coming into a kitchen or a baby's bedroom or somewhere outdoors like a vegetable garden. Conversely, when set to ignore fences, you can deactivate boundary feedback in certain places, perhaps sections of your yard with a physical fence or maybe an entranceway to your house or wherever they spend the most time inside for extra peace of mind. Now indoor beacons are battery operated and they can be used anywhere but they aren't weatherproof. Outdoor beacons are indeed weatherproof, so they're what you want to protect gardens and similar. And USB beacons can be plugged in so they don't rely on a battery, but again, they're not weatherproof and they're really for indoor use. Speaking of battery, a common question from our audience is how long the battery lasts on the collar. Halo says a charge will last up to 20 hours, and that seems about right in my experience. GPS collars are doing a lot more communicating than in-ground or wireless invisible dog fences, so that's why you see battery life measured more in terms of hours than weeks or even months. And of course, you can run that battery down faster if you're asking a lot of the collar, like spending a lot of time in the app, which will cause it to sync more frequently. So you're going to want to charge the collar whenever you're done for the day, but luckily Halo says it only takes about two hours to charge a completely drained battery, which also seems about right in my experience. Then there are remote training features, which basically means you can apply all the different types of prevention and encouragement feedback manually at any time via the app. Again, for prevention, that's warning, boundary, and emergency, while for encouragement, that's good behavior, return whistle, and head home. Lastly, before we get to field testing, there's a bit of activity monitoring built in as well. You can see the total time your pet has spent moving, as well as see how many walks they've logged in a day. So let's see this collar in action. Now, where the egg is on my face is that the collar relies on an accelerometer as part of the location logic. It needs to be shaken to activate that. Let's see how it performs with that implemented. To make it easier, I chose three custom sounds for the boundary feedback. You wouldn't be able to hear the vibration of the static correction, although we'll turn those on later. The warning feedback will be a fast beeping. The boundary feedback will be what they call buzzing. And the emergency feedback is called whistle short two. 
then the return whistle is Caesar's short whistle. And then there's the heading home feedback, which is Caesar saying, you're heading home. So let's see how it performs with that implemented. All right, so now I'm gonna do some boundary testing and I'll do my best to keep both the collar and my face in the screen, but it's a lot to juggle here. So I apologize if I'm a little sloppy, but let's see what happens as I approach the boundary. All right, so there's the alert tone. So I've stopped and it does switch right over to the warning tone. I haven't moved anymore, but it seems to be staying there. And that's giving me the emergency feedback and I haven't moved. But now we're back inside. So let's back up, let's turn around, and we're back in the safe zone. So this time I'm gonna try going a little bit farther, and we'll see if after I get out of the safety zone, it switches over to that callback, rather than continuing to apply the boundary feedback. So I'm gonna head over a little bit this way this time. All right, so there's the alert. I haven't moved. There's the warning. Still have not moved. Okay. So let's proceed now. Oh, I didn't even move and it's over to the emergency. Okay, that's fine. I understand the logic still, but let's continue on now. I'm gonna go up over this way. We are outside the fence boundary and continuing on that way. I don't really know how far 300 feet is, but I can tell when I'm way past it. I would say we're well past 300 feet, but I'm just gonna run for a while here. All right, so now it has stopped issuing the feedback entirely. Maybe we're you know, out of that range. I'm off my, my phone here. So let's start turning around here and see what happens as I head back towards the boundary. Still haven't heard any sort of return whistle or anything like that. But it is tracking my location. At least you can go find your dog. Just seems to have stopped giving any feedback whatsoever after a certain point. All right, so now we're back in the safe zone here. Let's see if it resets and goes back to giving feedback. Yep, goes right to the emergency there without any warning. And it did just give that short whistle now, so that does work sometimes at least, so. I mean, I think it's reliable enough to enforce the boundary for sure. It's definitely not dead on precise, but it does seem to sort of get the job done well enough that you can you know, use it for boundary training, so that's great. So the halo collar works much better when activating the accelerometer and applying the second and third hacks in particular that we discussed earlier. It's not perfect, but I think it can get the job done. I would caution that if your dog isn't activating that accelerometer properly, they could experience the artifacts that I've seen over the course of my field tests. The first being that the boundary may not get picked up when they cross, and the second, which is worse and definitely would be confusing for your dog, is that they could receive static correction while in the safe zone. Now I'm sure this works in most cases, otherwise Halo wouldn't have designed it this way, but there are definitely reports from our audience of these kinds of things happening. My guess is that it could be more common with smaller dogs, and also that each of those three hacks that we mentioned earlier could impact it as well if they're not implemented. Of course, I still need to test the Halo collar from a dog's perspective and make sure I can avoid getting hit with the static correction, so let's do it. Alright, so now let's see if I can avoid getting hit with that static correction as a quadruped. As you can see, I've gone ahead and installed the prongs for the static correction here. And I do have it mic'd up, that's how you can hear all the different sounds and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and turn on the fences, and then put on the collar, and then approach the boundary and see if I can avoid getting hit with that static correction. I'm all set. I'm not going to do that twice because I really don't want to get hit with that static correction. So there you have it, dog lovers. It does indeed work well enough that I can be notified of the boundary and return to safety without receiving the static correction. Although I didn't come out unscathed. And I just wanted to show you that I actually banged up my knee pretty darn good trying to get away from that static correction. Obviously not the worst injury I've had in my life, but I did want to get away to avoid getting hit with that. So, you know, that's, that's how my instinct kicked in. So once again, just keep that in mind if you are using the static correction. Now, as I promised at the top of this video, you'll get to see me get shocked, and I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Here's a compilation of all the times I've been hit with the static correction from the Halo Collar on film. Oh, there it is, yep, and once again. There's the warning right there. Oh God, oh God, that hurts. Oh, and now I'm getting shocked out of nowhere. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh God. I'm gonna sing off now, Jesus. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, enough of that. Remember to check out the video description for my latest recommendations and links to any deals that I have. You can also check out my review of the Spot on GPS fence, reviews and comparisons of other invisible fences, and you can even watch me eat dog food right here on this channel. Until next time, dog lovers, keep those tails wagging.